Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. This is going to be a little bit of a different video than all the ones I've been releasing so far. It's something I might have to do a couple of more times as the Rope Access library grows and as the exercises get more complicated and the possibilities for different methods increase. Let's get into it. So why this video? Because I just uploaded the video on how to change over from ascending to descending and from descending to ascending. By the time I release this, there will be, it would be about one week later. Straight away I got a comment from Tom, Tom Ridge I think it was, and he said that I cut away at the moment when my hand ascender was really high. I reacted to that comment and I, that's what, what I said there. You can check it out in the video, I'll link it up here. What I said in the comment is what happened. The fact remains that I did not do it properly. So what I did is I got out of my chest sender into my descender, but my hand of the sender was really high and I could have gotten it out, but because I wanted to show that step twice in a row, I just got back into it immediately. And because I did that, I got in pretty high as I do always, but you never do this thing twice. So I forgot to take out the slack or go down a little bit onto my descender when I got back out again. So in short, excuses, excuses. I could have done a better job. And because I'm creating the rope access channel to show the best practice in all the scenarios, or at least the best methods for certain scenarios, and then especially with a technique as basic and important as getting out of your descender or ascender, changing over between the two, it should be perfect. I am leaving the old video up to show what can happen. And I'm only human, I make mistakes too. In this video, I'll show you how to do it properly. Meaning, if you attach your descender underneath your chest sender, I'm doing it, but you can't see it in the video. Maybe it'll go like this. Uh, yep, move back a little bit. Always limit the distance between your descender and your chest ascender. I usually have maybe two or three fingers in between it. And if you do it like that, your handled ascender will always be low as well. If that step down is bigger, it gets too high. I will show it when climbing, but always keep everything as short and close together as possible, also with the handled ascender. All right, thank you, Tom, thank you. Sorry again, other person who commented. Um, I really encourage you guys to be critical of the videos I post. I wanna put the best stuff out there and this will help me to stay sharp and show the right techniques. Let's get into the real video and show you how it's done properly. Thank you. I've arrived at the top and I need to go down. So I need to change from my chest ascender to my descender. This time, I'm gonna show you the proper way. So first things first, for the camera, I'll take one more little step up like this. I thread the rope in my descender like I've shown in uh, that uh, video. I take out all the slack between my chest ascender and my descender. Let's see if I can show you like this. So there's like, three fingers of slack in between. That means if I step down, it's gonna be a small step and not like what I've shown you in the video I'm correcting right now. So now I'm ready to step out. I have the rope threaded in my descender the proper way. The handle is locked, I can step out. What I do is I put my handled ascender as low as possible that I can get out of. If it's too low, then my foot loop is too long. I need to shorten it. But like this, I can just, just stand up a little bit to open up the chest ascender. So basically, I have about two fists to where the, the crab is grabbing the rope, all right? Fairly easy. I step up, open the crawl, and sit back down. And now you will see that it's gonna be a fairly small sit back. That's it. I can easily reach the handles, handled ascender to take it off and start descending. 
I will show you again in my chest ascender, threaded the rope in the ID, in the correct manner. The handle is locked, it's in the down position, and there's one finger of slack between my chest ascender and my descender, so it's gonna be a really small sit back. I put my handle to sender as low as possible as I can comfortably use the foot loop. I grab the rope, stand up, open the chest ascender, close it, sit back down. Real small, real easy. Now I can clean up my handle to sender. And I would be able to descend down. But what if I came from the top, had to do some work in a, in a silo or above water, and I need to ascend back up. First, I grab my hand of the sender, put it on the rope, and now I'm ready to step up. But first, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to never miss a new upload. Now you've hit that bell and subscribed, I will show you how to step up and climb away. I have my hand of the sender on, my foot loop is in, I open my chest to sender, I grab the rope between my descender and my hand of the sender, and I grab the top of my hand of the sender, and then I step up. And if I do it in this way, my hand here, this one, will meet the chest to sender, and I can easily, with my palm, lock the chest ascender. Here we go. I step up, my hand meets the chest ascender, and I can close it easily and sit back down. So let me show you again. I have my hand at the sender on, move it up so that I can make a big step up, open the chest ascender, grab the hand at the sender, grab the rope in between the descender and the hand at the sender. I step back up, my hand meets the chest ascender, the rope goes in and I lock it. I manage my backup. I take out the rope from the descender, close it, and I can keep ascending. This video was sponsored by Industrieel Klimme. Industrieel Klimme, beautiful training center just north of Amsterdam, where they provide any working at height training you can think of. You can come here for your GWO training, your IRATA training, you can do your cell phone tower training or your tower climbing courses, all kinds of rescue courses. If the standard trainings are not suitable for your needs, they can make a custom one specifically towards your needs. If you need any climbing equipment, then you can visit their beautiful web store. There's a beautiful physical store and you can come in and check out all the latest gear and even try out all the latest gear. Cool, I will see you in the next video. Stay connected.